How's it? Welcome back to Basil's Garage. We're on part 10 of uh, Billy Bob's budget build in the Bay of Plenty. Um, it's been a big weekend here at the uh, Basil's Garage. Uh, we've been flat out doing uh, stuff to try and get it sorted. Uh, so I'll run you through where we're at at the moment. Uh, exciting times ahead. Uh, we'll talk firstly about some uh, things that we're working on. So um, what we've decided to do is to make a bumper for the rear. Now you have to have a rear bumper on the back of here. So what we've done is I'm lucky enough I've got access to a bender. So I've done a couple of bends, welded them together, um, used a hole saw and cut the fish mouths in here. So we've effectively made a bumper for the rear. The idea with this is we're going to grab a couple of these pieces here. Uh, we've just cut them out. We'll put that onto there. And then we've got some steel plate here, which we're going to cut a couple of steel plates, join this onto there, so it'll be like that, and then this will sit on here, uh, other way around, like that, and then we can bolt this to the back of the chassis, so we'll end up with a bumper. Uh, the bumper's only really there to stop people from rolling up over the back of your wheels, because we've seen that happen a few times, we don't want it to happen again, so it doesn't have to be built out of railway sleepers, the idea is to make it light it's just to stop somebody from hitting your rear wheel so this way it's easy to take off if somebody does hit us we can then repair it fairly easily so that's the back bumper the front bumper uh, a similar sort of an idea to what i've done before i've got a piece of exhaust tubing i've bent up another piece drilled a couple of holes and set it in there uh, and this will just sit on the front it's about the width of the bonnet we'll cap the ends of these um, and we'll put some again similar idea as this we'll put some braces coming off the back of here or off here and we'll mount it to the front so we can bolt it on so it's removable. So front bumpers, rear bumper, uh, looking pretty good. Uh, should come up quite nicely. Um, so the other exciting part for this is actually this little thing here. So those of you who run carburetors, and um, hold that thought, and I'll just grab a carburetor from over here to show you the sort of thing that we're talking about. Um, so effectively when you buy a carburetor, it looks a little bit like this. So this is actually the one that's on Billy Bob's, similar to Billy Bob's mower. Uh, this one has an accelerator pump on here, which means that when you accelerate, it squirts fuel in, hopefully stops flat spots. The problem is, somehow I've got an air filter here that I've got to put on here. Um, now you can see there's quite a disparity between the two. Now, we could get really carried away and we could machine up some aluminium and we could do all sorts of things to try and adapt it to it. We could get those stupid little air filters about this big, which you don't want to put on your mower because they don't allow enough um, reserve air when you accelerate. So you want a decent size air filter. This one's probably a little bit too big, but hey, you know, to go go big or go home, I don't know, something like that. Um, so what I've done is um, I've printed out of 3D this adapter. So the idea of this adapter is it has a nice little concave shape in here, like a velocity port, if you like. Uh, now this slides beautifully into here, like that. And then this is not the right hose, but you get a nice piece of that blue hose that slides over there. And then this piece of hose also slides over here. And you end up with a perfect adapter for your air filter. So that actually will slide into there. And then we'll put a little support to hold this up so it's not only so. So these adapters here um, effectively uh, give us a way to attach a decent size air filter to the carburetors. Uh, again, this is 3D printed. Uh, we can make them to any dimension. Um, if you think it's something you might want to have a go at, give us a, give us a yell, uh, we'll see if we can uh, print one up for you. Uh, I don't know what sort of costing they'll be, probably a oh, million dollars or something like that for one of these, because they're you know, one of a kind things to make up, so, so hit me up and we'll talk about pricing. Um, I'm not here to make money, I'm here to have uh, more people racing, so hit me up about that. So, quite a cool idea, brain fart in the middle of the night. So, having a look at the old uh, the mower here, we've had a bit of, uh, bit of fun this weekend. We have um, had the wheels painted yellow, so they look really, uh, really John Deere-ish, I think is the best thing to say. Nice and John Deere-ish, uh, front and rear. We've also uh, put some side panels on here to stop your feet from sliding off the side. Uh, with the pedals here, we've done a bit of a modification to them. They weren't quite strong enough the way that we had got them, so we've now cut them and welded them at each end. It's a lot stronger. Uh, and we've had to adjust the clutch and things. Uh, the rear ones have all been done, painted up nice and yellow, so it's looking pretty bling. Uh, we've covered over the uh, the old place where the fuel tank was with a nice bit of bling as well. Uh, underneath the, the seat here, we've cut a big hole in here so we can get into the right angle drive, which is below here, and then we put those captive nuts in here, so you just undo this and the panel comes off for inspection, uh, and that works, works quite nicely. 
Uh, the other thing that turned up over the week uh, was the new accelerator cable. So this accelerator cable, as you can see, has got twin parts going off to it. So one is for the accelerator, pen, uh, accelerator pump and one is for the actual carburetor itself. Uh, we have talked about all this uh, wiring and, and hoses here. So this bit here is running the vacuum pump and we have a return coming back into the tank. So it's quite cool when you open up the tank, when it's running, you can actually see the fuel squirting back out. So it's keeping the fuel cooler, but it's also um, not pressurizing it. So it doesn't, uh, it doesn't over pressurize in the fuel system. We've had a little bit of a touch up with the paint in there and it's all looking pretty good. Uh, so I guess the big question is, um, does it actually run? Uh, does it go? So I think what we should do is um, maybe we should push it outside a bit because I'll die if we started it here. So I'm going to close the bonnet down and um, push it out through here. Uh, we'll push it out to here um, and we'll see what happens. So we've got the exhaust coming out here. Oh, that reminds me. Hang on, hold that thought. We've got this really cool chrome extension, which somehow we're going to make fit on here. And I reckon that potentially is very cool. So uh, we'll probably modify this a little bit so it sits just nicely here. Uh, maybe put an angle on it, I don't know. But uh, yeah, nice chrome extension. It'll make it go faster. Uh, right, so let's give it a go at starting it. Um, oh, actually, other thing to remember is down in here in the steering, um, we have actually modified these angles in here and it's given us a whole lot more steering lock which um, we were struggling moving it around here so we, we adjusted that to get more steering lock. So let's check it in the gut stream and see what happens. Uh, we'll turn the fuel on. Fuel's on. Um, we'll push the magic start button. switch works as well so I think probably the best thing to do now is to uh, take it to a paddock somewhere and have a bit of a fang and see what happens with it So we had a bit of a ride, um, very, very promising. Uh, quite happy with the way it performed. Uh, it's got plenty of power at this stage, although we have noticed by looking at the spark plug when we got back that it's quite lean. So um, we did talk about putting a oxygen sensor in it to monitor what we're driving. We haven't done that yet, so we will do that. Uh, but I know it's lean because the spark plug's looking really, really white. So um, that will, will, will do, change the jetting in the carburetor so that uh, that sorts that out. Um, the gearing also feels a little bit out. So um, we're going to change the gearing on the back. We're going to change a couple of tooth on the sprocket in the rear to see if that makes a bit of a difference. Uh, handling felt pretty good. Uh, other than that, um, pretty positive. So we've just got to finish off the, uh, the bumpers and uh, put a chain guard on the back. Uh, finish the uh, the bumper on the front as well and change the gearing and tune the engine um, but it's it's pretty promising well I don't think we're far away from uh, from taking it out to the track and giving it some some proper tuning so um, until next time uh, thanks for visiting Baz's garage if you need any information just send me a message uh, in the comments whatever you like subscribe to my channel so you can have more stuff popping up on your on your inbox um, other than that we'll see you next time cheers <laughs>